Hi, this is Dr. Drake, and I want to make sure that you understand salvation. I want to make sure that you know that you are saved. When you get on a boat, you don't want to say, well, I think it'll float. You don't want to take a flight from USA to Europe and go, well, we should get across the Atlantic. I think, no, you want to know that this thing is fueled up. The pilots I want to make sure you know you're saved. And this comes out of the book of Romans, which is the best explanation of the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. It's the first thematic book in the New Testament because it's the most important concept. Do you know that the book of Romans is the most smuggled book in all history? Smuggling the gospel into closed countries where it's not allowed the book of Romans gets smuggled in the most. And I want you to understand Romans. I want you to understand salvation. First thing about salvation is we need to admit that we have the need for salvation. This is in Romans 1, 2, and 3. We are not fine. We're not going to be okay on our own. We need salvation. All humanity is under sin. There's a wall between us and God since leaving the Garden of Eden, and we have no excuse. We can't say, well, I'm not saved and I didn't know. <laughs> that excuse doesn't fly. The Gentiles know that salvation is needed, and there is a God. We get this from creation. It's a clear on testimony that God has order and has a plan. I remember being four years old, and I was going through a suburban town out of sight of Los Angeles. And I looked at this city, and I looked at this people, this skull, I thought, okay, what's wrong? I'm four. Can I understand? No, I don't know. I can't make sense of it, but something is wrong. If I knew it as a kid, we know it. We all know something's wrong and something needs to get rectified here. That's the need for salvation. The whole world knows it. Second thing, we need to realize that salvation is a gift. It's a gift of God. We can't boast about it. This is explained in Romans 3, 4, and 5. The need is 1, 2, 3, and the fact that it's a gift is in 3, 4, and 5. The gift of righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. We just believe that his gift comes to us. And what do you got to do to get a gift on Christmas? Just have parents that love you and have it be December 25th. Your parents don't have all these awesome demands on you to give a Christmas gift. It's just a gift. Salvation is a gift. We are justified as a gift from God. It's not earned through works. Works. Now, let me tell you what's wrong with works. Works demand wages. And if we do good works, works demand wages. That means God owes us salvation. He owes us paradise. Oh man, I better give them salvation. They did some good things. No, no one jerks God around. God doesn't owe us anything. Just like you can't drive to the sun. If you need to get to the sun and somehow you get there and you wouldn't be burned somehow. By the way, it's 93 million miles away. There need to be a road there. You need to drive and you need to buy about 3 million gallons of gas. There's no stations between here and the sun. And once you get to the sun, you're not even one thousandth of the way to paradise in heaven. You're not going to get there through works. It's too much. It's too far. It demands too much perfection. So works can't save you. It is a gift given to us through Jesus' death that reconciles humanity to God, and it provides access to God's grace, God's gift of salvation. Yeah, and Calvary proves that God will do anything to save us. God gave his one and only son. People will not give up their son and sacrifice him so that those guilty people over there can go free. Well, he'll pay the penalty so you can be free. Nobody does that. God did it. God did it for us. It's love that's greater than we can understand. Salvation is a gift. We need it. It's a gift. The third thing about it is that we identify with Christ in his death and resurrection. This is explained in Romans 6, 7, and 8. Freedom from sin and the law is achieved through this identification with Christ. I, I, I remember the, 
<laughs> I remember the first time I got pulled over by a policeman. I knew the cop because we lived in a, in a valley canyon. We, we all just knew each other. But I was just like, room, and right through a stoplight, way ahead of me. And, uh, some car skate way out. It was a cop. <laughs> And he did a U-turn and pulled right like oh. my pulse was my pulse was just about three hundred and fifty. And he's pulling over and he walks up the car, he goes, License or register. My name is Drake Travis. He said, Are You the Travis kid? I said, Yes, officer. He goes, I ought to write you a fat ticket. Oh, I want to write you a fat ticket, but I like your dad. You got great parents. You're from a great family. He says, that's your house right over there? I said, yes, I live right over there. He says, you go straight home. Oh, I ought to write you a ticket, but I'm going to let you go. You go straight home. You go straight. He says, officer, I'm going to go straight home. <laughs> Why did I get let off? Because of my identity. He likes my dad, so he lets me. He likes me, and he let me go. We are let go. Because Christ is in us, and God identifies with that. He goes, yep, th there, I'm going to let him go. We don't, that's identity with Christ. His death and resurrection are how we are united with him. It's not self-justification. I don't know if you saw the movie this fall. Fall 2023, there was a movie called After Death. And one person in there testifies, and he, he was condemned. He was not saved, did not know the Lord, got into suicide, and he killed himself through cocaine usage. And instantly he was on the other side and more alert than he'd ever been in this life. That's what the other side's all about. And he was descending. He says, I felt like I was descending at a thousand miles an hour. And he said, no, God, I, I, you can't do this. I'm a good guy. I just hurt myself. I didn't hurt anybody else. And as he justified himself, bargaining with God as he's ascending, he said, I began to descend twice as fast as I tried to justify myself. You cannot justify yourself. Spiritually, legally, intrinsically, relationally, you, relationally, you can't justify yourself. Self-justification is a hopeless endeavor. Identify with Christ. That's how it happens. And the Holy Spirit empowers believers with new life. And it's like, you know, it's not like you know, God gives us batteries and they run for a while. It's like he gives us an unlimited visa. What's the limit on this? When's the payment due? Your visa, you know, comes due in the middle of the month and better be paid by the end of the month. Or here comes interest. Our identity with Christ gives us an unlimited visa for deeds of righteousness in Christ and endless power to do this. Would you like to have a visa with a $50 million limit on it that someone else paid off every month? I mean, it, it's, it's so fantastic, but it is God, and that's how much God loves us. Third thing about salvation is that his faithfulness is shown to us. His chosen people. This is in Romans 9, 10, and 11. And God remains faithful to his children, to his chosen, to us Gentiles who've been grafted in. We're adopted children and we're loved just as much as the chosen are. We're like that. We're loved just as dearly as a firstborn. And this equation is not, you know, revelation plus good works equals grace and salvation. No, it's not like that. The equation is God reveals himself to us through his grace and faith. And if we accept it, we have salvation. That equates salvation. And because of the result of salvation, then we do good deeds of gratitude. The last thing about it is that we are transformed into a life lived to God. This is Romans 12 through 15. Believers are called to live these lives. I remember giving a message October 1992 to a group of college kids. And my, basically, my basic message was, get up and live. You can do this. Stop the guilt. Stop looking back. Stop the, oh, dear, oh, woe is me. Stop the striving. Just accept it and let God infuse himself into you, and you can get up and live. It's like Jesus told that woman caught in adultery. They're trying to accuse her. And he forgives her, and he says, go. 
and sin no more. Some people never go. They just sit in their guilt. Some people go and keep on sinning. No, go and sin no more. With Christ's identification and Christ's power and Christ's grace and Christ's gift in your life, this can be done. And we have a new operandus, a modus, a MO modus operandi, a motive, a motive operation. We have a transformed and we have a new mind. Just declare it. Lord, that stuff doesn't control me anymore. You do. You make that statement and your mind is transformed. Do you have Jesus? I got another question. Does he have you? He says, I am the life. He is the lifeboat. When the boat's going down, all that matters is that you have a lifeboat. Whether you do your stretching or your tie bow, got your vegetables, whether you pray the right prayer, whether you read, none of that matters. Oh, I've been a real good person on this boat. I can't sink. You need a lifeboat. And Jesus said, I am the life. What does the peasant girl in the village need to do? If the prince walks through and says, wow, I want her, what does she need to do? To be the queen, to marry the prince and become the queen when he becomes the king, all she's got to do is say, I do. The prince of peace offers you eternal life. You just say, I do. And you know what? Revelation says a city of gold is then yours. That's a little too fantastic. Pray this with me. If you're ready to pray this, pray this now. Lord, I need you. Lord, I realize your salvation is a gift. I identify with you here and on forward. I trust you will be faithful and you will sustain me as, your, as one of your believers. I trust you for transformation and it will happen in the Holy Spirit. In Christ, I move forward in you. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, put in the comments, I just prayed that prayer. And if you will, subscribe. Why, why do I do this? Why do I, why, I, I do this because I want you to have eternal life in Christ Jesus the Lord. And, and I'm committed to you finding him and living victoriously in his kingdom. In faith it will happen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Until next time.